Right, now let's take a closer look at question 8, which is a question that is based on Euclidean geometry. It is from the metric paper of 2022. It is paper 2. Okay, so 8.1 reads as follows. It says, in the diagram, O is the center of the circle. MNPR is a cyclic quadrilateral and SN is a diameter of the circle. Chord MS and radius OR are drawn. Angle M2 is equal to 64 degrees. Okay, cool. We can see there when M, N, P and R all lie on the circumference, they form that cyclic quad. Uh, point S and point N are on either ends of point O, the center, that makes uh, SN to be the diameter. And angle M2 has been given to us as 64 degrees. Now, uh, the questions read as follows. They say determine, giving reasons, the size of the following angles. Angle P. Okay. So now, what is angle P? If you go back to the sketch, you see that P is actually this angle here at the bottom. It happens to be opposite uh, angle M2. And I think we all know that if you have got a cyclic quad, the opposite angles of that cyclic quad would always add up to 180 degrees. The fancy way of saying that is we say they are supplementary. So that means we can literally say 180 minus 64 will give us a value of angle P. Okay, very important. So angle P is equal to 180 degrees minus 64 degrees. And the reason is these are opposite angles of a uh, cyclic quad, of a cyclic quadrilateral. They are supplementary. Uh, therefore, that makes angle P to be equal to... Uh, the value that happens to be 116 degrees, 116 uh, degrees. Okay, so moving on to the next one, we uh, now have to figure out the value of angle M1. Angle M1, let's go back and check what M1 is in the drawing. So M1 happens to be this angle on the left here next to M2. Um, what I'm going to use for this one is the fact that this SN is a diameter and we all know Okay, that if you have a diameter, the angle that is subtended by a diameter, the angle in a semicircle has to be 90 degrees. So that means M1 and M2 collectively needs to give us the value of 90 degrees. So I can be able to use that to figure out what the value of angle M1 is going to be. Okay, so I'll just quickly say uh, M1 plus M2 equals to 90 degrees. Okay, let's just use uh, this one here, angle M1 plus angle M2 should give us 90 degrees because those are angles on a semicircle, okay, on a semicircle, and then that quickly implies that angle M1 is going to be equal to the difference between 90 and M2. So since M2 was 64, this one will have to be equal to 26 degrees. Okay, uh, moving on to the next one here quickly. We are now required to find the value of angle O1. Let's look closely at what O1 is, O1, O1, O1. Now, when it comes to O1, it's important for us, first of all, to make sure that after finding something, we always put it in the drawing. For example, we now know that this angle here is 116 degrees. It's actually the advice I would give you to always do when you're doing geometry. And this one is literally going to be 26 degrees. So I'm sitting with those angles, and I'm interested in finding the value of angle O1, which is the angle at the center here. I think I'm going to use the fact that angle at center is twice the angle of the circumference. I'll indicate this in blue. So if you look here at this arc, this arc SR subtends O1 at the center. Okay, it subtends O1 at the center. And the same arc subtends uh, the angle of the circumference, which happens to be M1. Okay, it looks almost like a bow tie, but it's not really going to be and also the same segment because one is at the center and the other one is at the circumference. So there's a relationship between 26 degrees and angle O1. In fact, O1 is double 26 degrees because there's the theorem that says the angle of the center is twice angle at the circumference. It's always, always difficult for most people to see that relationship. So I hope you guys can be able to see it. So I'm just quickly going to say angle O1 is going to be two times uh, uh, angle M2, okay, angle M1. Why? Because the angle at center is twice the angle at the circumference. Okay, two times angle at the circumference, therefore angle O1. Since that one is 26 degrees, we can clearly see that it's going to come out as 52 degrees. Awesome. Okay, so now we go to uh, question 8.2. It reads as follows. It says in the diagram, okay, triangle ABG is drawn. 
D and E are midpoints of AB and AG respectively. AG and BG are produced to C and H respectively. F is a point on BC such that FG is parallel to CH. Okay, cool. Now, um, we are required here to give a reason why will DE be parallel to BH? Why is DE parallel to PH? Okay, let's go back and look at this. DE happens to be this line over here, and now they're seeing it's parallel to this line at the bottom here. Okay, now there's this thing called the midpoint theorem. The midpoint theorem says if you could put the point D to be the midpoint of one side of the triangle, which in this case is triangle ABG, you'll see that that's actually the midpoint of the triangle that I have here on the far left. I'll just draw it in uh, green, so we've got that particular triangle there. So point D happens to be the midpoint of AB and point E happens to be the midpoint of EG. It implies that two things are going to happen according to the midpoint theorem, okay? DE will be parallel to BG and DE will be half of DE. So those two things are going to happen. I'm going to put them in here. Number one, this will be parallel to that. Number two, whatever the length of this is, okay? If this length is X, the other length is going to, to be two times that, okay? That's the relationship in terms of uh, those two sides. This is because of the midpoint theorem. The question is asking you to give a reason why DE is parallel to uh, the side BG. And I'm going to say it's because of the midpoint theorem, okay? Midpoint theorem that says if you are drawing uh, a line from one midpoint of one side to the midpoint of the other side, that line will be parallel to the third side and it will be half of the length of the set, third side of the triangle. So that's the reason. Okay, now um, in closing, they're saying to us here, if it is further given that FC divided by BF is equal to one over four, DE equals to three X minus one and GH equals X plus one, calculate giving reasons the value of X. So we want to find a numerical value of X um, given these particular uh, details. Okay. So what I'm going to do first of all is uh, try and put this information on the diagram so that we can analyze it much better, right? I'm going to try and put this uh, so quickly. Let's just clear what we have here. We know that these are parallel to each other. They have actually uh, helped us to figure it out. We know the midpoint theorem is involved somehow. Now, in the opening statement, this statement that they give us here, we are told here that uh, DE is 3X minus 1 and GH is X plus 1. Okay, 3X minus 1. Okay, DE is 3x minus 1, it's this one here, and then this one here is going to be x plus 1, okay? And then we are also told that there's a ratio that is interesting here that happens to be uh, between the line FC and um, BF. So FC divided by BF is 1 divided by 4. FC over BF, so there's FC here, this, okay, and BF this here, they are in the ratio 1 is to 4. So if this is 4k units, that will be 1k units. I'm literally introducing the variable k just to say to you, if I need to use that ratio, k, that is how we can represent it. We don't know the actual length of this thing, but uh, we can actually try and figure out what this is going to be by making exactly what I have there. Okay, now in the bottom triangle B, H, C, okay, that flat triangle that is lying there, we're just missing the length of B, G for us to be able to construct a complete proportionality relationship there. However, we know there's a relationship between this side 3x minus 1 and that bottom length. It's going to be double it. So it's going to be 2 times 3x minus 1 because of uh, the midpoint theorem. It allows us to claim that BG is going to be double DE. So I'm going to say that BG. So BG is going to be 2 times DE. And this is because of the midpoint theorem. Okay. Mid point theorem allows us to claim that. Now that implies that BG will now have the length of 2 times 3x minus 1, which makes it exactly 6x minus 2 units. Okay, that's what I have. Now what am I sitting with? I'm now sitting with a triangle, the one that I'm going to draw here, that has interesting things. What are those interesting things? That's got a P here. Um, it has G somewhere here. Okay, and then it has H somewhere here. It has C and F here. We now know that we know from the given information that this is four times something, and this one is going to be one times that because the ratio of those two will be one is to four. We've worked out the length of this one, was given to us as x plus one, but this one we just worked it out to be six x minus two. 
So since this is parallel to that, I can build a ratio here, a proportionality relationship here that says uh, the ratio of one side of the triangle is going to be equal to the ratio of the other two sides uh, on, the other, on the other side of the triangle, which means uh, 6x over 2, 6x minus 2 over x plus 1, okay? That is the ratio I have at the top, the ratio at the top. This divided by this should be the same as this divided by that. And this is coming from the proportionality theorem, okay? Very important. So 6x divided by x plus 1 should be equal to uh, 4k divided by uh, 1k. And where is this coming from? This is coming from the proportionality theorem, and this is only possible because we've got GF being parallel to HC. You have to mention the parallel lines. If you don't, it's a big problem. Big, big, big problem. Okay, so then the Ks will fall off because like, they just help me to work out the lengths here, but then I can just drop them off and then start uh, to equate the products that I get when I multiply both sides by x plus 1. Uh, cross multiplication. So I'm getting 6x minus 2 is equal to 4 times x plus 1, which is going to give us 4x plus 4. Okay, what did I do? Cross multiplication, this by that. And then, of course, you can also do the same thing with this one by that. Or you multiply both sides by the LCD, which happens to be x plus 1. Now, from here, I'm subtracting 4x on both sides, I'm going to get 2x. And then adding 2 on both sides, I'm going to get 6. So x comes out as exactly equal to 3. And this is how you can actually work out the solution to uh, this awesome, awesome question that is based on Euclidean geometry.